What's up guys, Rick with Raleigh Sport Direct here and welcome to the very first episode of the Land Speed Record Vlog. Now in this series, I'm gonna go more in depth as far as what we're doing kind of behind the scenes. So let's get started. Now I should mention full disclosure, when I first started working on this car, I didn't really know how I was gonna shoot this. And so this first episode isn't gonna be very vloggy, uh, but the next episodes that follow will. But I wanted to jump in first an introduction. Uh, if you guys haven't seen the primary video on this car, uh, I highly suggest you watch it. And of course I'll throw a link somewhere up here and then of course in the description down below. To kind of uh, give you guys a very brief summary, we're gonna set a free <laughs> Lance speed record in a crappy little Subaru. But as per the rules, you know, the land speed organization allows world cars now, thanks to our friends uh, over at Moto IQ. And so with this, what we can do is we can swap in an EJ20, uh, but we're not gonna do just that. We're actually gonna be running in the one liter class. So with that, of course, being that it has to be like a factory production car with the factory turbo EJ20, we're gonna have to turn this into a version six STI. Obviously it doesn't look like it now. It looks like a pile of crap, but that's okay. The one liter part, which I think is the most interesting, we wanted to test out. And of course it came with a pretty decently running 2.2 liter. So we figured why not test it out with a 2.2 liter and turn it into a 1.1 liter. So we, you know, of course brought the car in, took the engine out and started digging into it. Um, after we were able to like poke around a little bit, we kind of figured out, okay, I think we can do this. We've been able to experiment a little bit with this. And one, we're pretty confident that we can remove the rods without splitting the case halves, which is fantastic for us. Uh, and so we figured we could just go ahead and do it. So we went ahead and took out the two rods. Nailed it. It's all you, I'm off but the next biggest problem is well what do we do with the oiling ports well i did have an idea that is a rivet in there and it is quite secure it was a really stupid idea well maybe not in hindsight well uh we kept on digging into the engine and we got to the heads because we didn't want the valves to be you know opening and closing and uh so we were basically able just to remove the uh, rockers uh, from the head on those particular cylinders but with that then on the rocker arm assembly, there are oil ports there. And we're like, well, you know, let's just go ahead and weld these up. And then I came up with the brilliant idea. Why don't we just go ahead and weld the crank? Uh, All right, ladies and gentlemen, we officially have <laughs> welded up oil ports. Maybe not the best idea in the world. Should be good. Of course, once the crank was welded, uh, we could basically start putting everything back in. Uh, so we essentially had, you know, a Subaru engine with four pistons, two rods missing, and everything, all the oil passages welded up. And we thought, we're doing pretty good here. So we fired it up. Okay, go for it. And it ran. It actually ran oh, it. Oh, oh. for like eight seconds uh, and then just kind of sputtered and almost just seemed like it just kind of died, you know, like, oh, it's like a fueling issue or something like that. So we started tearing into it. We have something seized. It's basically just not uh, moving at all, even with the breaker bar on the crank. So let's go ahead and start pulling stuff apart again. Glad, glad we didn't fill with coolant wouldn't turn by hand so like you know logically I'm like okay well let's first start with the easiest things uh you know we took out the spark plugs maybe it was hydro lock you know oil could have gotten in there and just locked it up so took out the spark plugs still wouldn't turn over then the next is like well we, I, I need to identify if it's coming from the cams or the crank itself so uh we took off the timing belt that's spinning um poop that's not good if it comes out easy enough it does come out very easy so started stripping or started digging back down into the block itself and uh you know nothing looked weird i mean i had the oil pan off i was able to see as i cannot see anything that looks you know out of the ordinary everything looks normal even trying to inspect up in one and two uh the rods don't look bent or anything like that so you know the crank looked healthy everything appeared to be fine 
I was really scratching my head over this one and uh, you know, digging down deeper and deeper and deeper. And I'm like, screw it, let's just go ahead and split the freaking block. Basically, I think some slag, uh, maybe when that weld first hit, some slag jumped down, went into the oil ports. So I think it got pushed up into the rod uh, journals on the cylinders that had rods and basically just got ground down into you know, a fine dust uh, until I think enough of it built up in there that it just seized the freaking rod onto the crank. Um, everything was pretty scored up and we were kind of bummed because I was really hoping that you know, we could just rock and roll on this project. Uh, so we, came, we had a, a moment and you know, basically made an executive decision. We've got this Forester out there that needs a new engine. Um, <clears throat> And by the way, for everyone asking about the Forester project, we will, I've, I can literally see a pile of parts over there. It is coming. I'm sorry it's taking so long. Anyway, the Forester, we pull that thing in. It was barely running as is. I think we did some real damage to it. Something else in there. gasket. Um, but we figured, you know what, it's, we're going to replace the engine anyway. Let's just go ahead and sacrifice another one. But, you know, of course, being a EJ257 and uh, like usable parts off of it, it made me a little bit more nervous. So I was really wanting to do this one correctly. And then in my cheap, you know, DIY shade tree mechanic brain, I was like, you know, what we could do is get a very long skinny bolt and you know, use like washers and uh, O-rings and stuff like that and run it up through the journals, tighten it all down. So I did that 70 millimeter by four millimeter bolts and nuts. Um, really tried hard to do a really good job on it and, uh, you know, torque it down and bent the crap out of the, the tip of the, the bolt just so that nut couldn't back off. But the problem with the dual overhead cam is we can't just take off rocker arms like the valves are going to be actuated and i was really concerned that uh the piston itself would like be sucked up into the valves or something like that and just you know destroy uh the valve train and ruin the head another genius solution i modified the wrist pins so that you could slide them in there and they were actually sitting up still inside the block but inside the piston if that makes sense so the piston couldn't move up or down it was essentially locked in place then we welded up the exhaust ports on the header itself not on the heads of course and then i built a really crappy uh intake manifold gasket with only one opening right so the other one was completely closed off so we didn't have any air flowing into the heads we didn't have any air flowing out the piston was locked in place at bottom dead center and the valves were free to actuate as they wanted to. So we got it all put back together. We put on a TDO4 turbo, um, a good up pipe, and uh, threw it back in the car and it started up. And I was super freaking stoked. And uh, of course, it, that, that engine had really low compression, but it ran, it ran seemingly fine, you know? And uh, we took it outside and we took it to Redline a whole bunch of times. If you guys follow us on Instagram, um, I think we did a live video. Uh, it was not happy, but it, you know, we held that thing at Redline until basically it overheated. Um, and so I think we proved our point with this. And so, well, at least good enough to proceed forward. So now we're basically right now, the car is as it is, uh, no engine. Uh, so the plan of attack, I'm going to be stripping out the interior. Uh, I do know we need to keep the dash or at least a factory. I think we can replace it with aluminum or something. I think we can replace the door cards with aluminum, but I'd rather just keep those for now. But we do have to weld in a cage. We've already got the cage. One thing I really want to do, especially considering just the look of the car. Um, I did, when we bought it, I did have a quick look over on it and everything looked fine, you know, very minimal rust to surface rust. But what I'd like to do is drop all the subframes, um, basically get a full inspection of the underside of the car. Uh, obviously we need a, a turbo front cross member. I think I'll probably end up using one off like a WRX wagon. I think I'll buy that new. The rear cross member, if there's anything wrong with it, I'll end up going with a, a WRX rear cross member. And then, uh, We'll do full suspension, of course, bushings, everything, but you know, it's safety is obviously a big concern. So if anything needs to be replaced, it needs to be replaced. And I'd rather get, you know, new fresh stuff than, you know, trying to reuse old stuff. But of course the budget is also incredibly tight. So if we can reuse some old stuff, we're going to reuse some old stuff. Uh, and then uh, I think here very soon, 
uh, we'll end up getting like the full version six, you know, front end wing and all that kind of stuff. So this is going to be really exciting. But anyway, I apologize. This really isn't a vlog, and that's okay. Uh, next one, it will be a vlog, and it'll be very much more in depth. I wish I could have shown you guys more about the engines. If you guys do have any questions on the engine itself, um, or if you want to see anything, I mean, we've still got the blocks here. I can split it open and show you guys uh, whatever you want. Uh, anyway, thank you guys. See you on the next one. It'll be better, I promise. Okay, bye. This is the fun stuff. Yep, agreed.